Hello, my friends, my warriors. This is Mary Mack of The Mary Mack Show. I'm so grateful that you've joined me today. And we're going to speak about what some people believe is very controversial, and that's the power of prayer. Now, I know there are some of you who are watching me right now or listening to me, and you're thinking, exactly what is she going to tell me that I don't already know? Well, stay to the end and maybe you'll find out. I've been praying since I was a very little Catholic girl at six years old. And I remember one particular night, I think I was either six or seven, that I woke up in the middle of the night, wrapped myself in my blanket and went over and sat on the radiator. And I looked into the courtyard and clear as day, I heard God say to me, one day, Mary, you will do great things for me. Now, I haven't shared that with very many people up until this point, but I want you to know that he is real and he does speak to you. And if you give him time, he will speak to you. And if you ask him, he will speak to you. And you can hear it in a still small voice very quiet when you calm your whole body down and you're just with him, when you're just with the Lord. For many of you who don't know him, we need to rectify that right away. Jesus Christ is real. He lived on this earth. He was persecuted. He was crucified. And he rose again after three days. All the other religions in the world, their leaders, we can't say that about them. You can go and check that out. So today, I want you to know that he loves you. He loves you. And he misses you. Because you have been a part of his life since the day you were conceived in your mother's womb. And whatever relationship you had with your family, good or bad, he's still right there for you. He's watching over you. He brings people to help you. And maybe you don't recognize it all the time. But if you start to really look, you can see that he's been there for you in so many ways over your lifetime. Is it the car accident that you weren't in? Did you ever see a car that zoomed right past you and you thought, wow, that was lucky I didn't get hit? Well, maybe it was the angels he sent to protect you. And was it the trip you didn't have that you would have fallen and broken something? You didn't do that either. And maybe it was the difficult delivery of the birth of your child, but the baby came out well and healthy. And aren't you grateful for that? But you may say to me, but Mary, different people in my life, they've been hurt. They were born disabled or they died early in my life. What do you have to say about that? Well, what I have to say is, is that in my life, very early in life, I started to lose loved ones, many loved ones in my teens, in my early 20s, in my late 20s, even the 11 year old death of a stepdaughter who was murdered. And those of you who follow me remember Angela. But now, when I look back, I had gone through a very angry phase at God. And I'm sure there's plenty of you right now who are still very angry at him for what he did do or what he didn't do in relationship to those you loved. And all I can say to you is this, no matter how many broken records go on in your head, asking the why question. And I've had many years of that because it took 18 years just to solve that crime. 
and another two to convict the person. And that record would go around and around and around in my head and I'd say, Lord, why was she taken so young? Why did she need to die such a horrible death? And I would never come up with an answer. And finally, I was listening to a minister who said, Mary, you will never have all these questions answered until you yourself die, go to heaven, and the Lord will explain it all. And I thought to myself, can I live with that answer? And it was a yes, that I can live with. That answer I can live with, it could settle in my soul. And so it did. And it helped me to move forward, to move forward in life and recognize that I'm not gonna have all the answers because I'm not God. I'm not God and neither are you. And it makes it really sad, doesn't it? Because you want all those answers. You want to feel in control. But we aren't, and we won't. And so I can say to you that the greatest gift you can have is the power of prayer. To be able to talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, like you're speaking to me. Just sit with him every day. Sit with him. You can be in your car, you can be on your couch, it doesn't matter. But just sit with him and talk to him. Talk to him like he's your best friend, because he is. And just tell him what's going on in your life. But I want you to know that you don't have to beg. Don't beg. He doesn't respond to begging. Don't say, oh Lord, please, I really need this or that to happen or I really need this or that house or a car or whatever. Don't beg, act like it's already done. Lord, I am so grateful for the house you're going to be sending me, for the car you're going to be sending me. Or with enough faith, you wind up saying, Lord, I thank you for the blessings you've given me. I thank you for the car. I thank you for my house. I thank you for the finances to live a good life every single day, to have more than enough. And I especially thank you for protecting me and my family. You know, many of us haven't prayed in years maybe since our first communion or confirmation or dedication or baptism, when we were very little after that, we never really participated in a church. But being a Christian is one of the most wonderful things you can be because you get to live eternity with Christ. I don't know any other religions that guarantee you everlasting, that guarantee you a place in heaven forever. I don't. And how I know that is because in my work in the field of grief, I've met many people who have had near-death experiences who come back to earth after they've been on their road to heaven and God has sent them back. You have more to do, he'd say. And they could see themselves floating above their body in the operating room or having walked through the light to see themselves be asked to go back. And many of them came back and said, I didn't want to come back. It was too beautiful up there. I was greeted by so many relatives and friends who were there waiting for me. But when they came back, they were here to tell you about that. And if you haven't known about that, just look up some near-death experiences of people who were in heaven and came back. 
And for that reason alone, you should be comforted to know that once you accept Christ, that's where you're going to go for eternity. So no matter what happens here in this lifetime, in this world right now, which is so screwed up, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> it's so screwed up. We have no idea what's going to happen one day to the next. That's what seems to happen these days. All the plans that we made and all the work we've done to prepare, and we're still not sure that we're ready. We're not. So right now, I'd like to just share the words you could speak in your heart to accept Christ as your savior. So you're welcome to pray after me. Just say, Lord, I love you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I ask you to welcome me as your child. Welcome me into your love, into your place. Let me be so connected to you. Thank you for welcoming me in welcoming me in to your love and your light. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and I ask you to forgive all my sins. That's it. No big hurrah. It's so easy. Now, from here on out, I want you to be praying consistently in your mind, in your heart, right? Throughout the day, when you wake up, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you show me. Thank you for my good health, my happiness, the love of the people in my life. Thank you for the food I have, for the transportation I have, for the roof over my head, for the clean sheets, for the clean clothes, that things work in my home, that my children are saved, that my children are well and healthy. There are so many things that you can thank him for all day long. And when you ask, ask with gratitude. I thank you, Lord, that you are sending me what I need. I am grateful for everything you give me. Everything you give me. I appreciate everything I am and everything you trained me to be. I thank you that I'm able to be a plumber, be a writer. I'm grateful that I get to do this wonderful work to serve others. I ask you to protect all those I love. I ask you, Lord, please cover me with the blood of Jesus, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's a big one. Do this every day. Say those words. Lord, I thank you that you cover me with the blood of Jesus and protect me from all evil. Big thing. So please remember, never beg. Always ask for what you want and believe with faith that you will get it because faith is what moves the Lord. Faith is what moves him. So I thank you for being here today. I want to show you one of my books that I've put out. It's a collection of journals because I believe if you have a really good journal, before you go to bed every night, you can write five things in it that you're grateful for. 
And this way, when you go to sleep, you are going to sleep with a grateful heart. You thank him for everything you have. And it's a beautiful way to go to sleep. And then the next day, you do the same thing. And you keep doing that. So let me show you my favorite one. There are five covers. This is my favorite. This is the teacup. And I just love it. And inside, you'll see all the pages, line pages for you to write. Very easy. And the one thing I do like about it is I put the first page that says, this book is especially for. So if you'd like to purchase it and give it to someone you love, do that. Now, each cover comes in four different journals. This is my journal. There's one for my grief journal, one for my remembrance journal, and one for my gratitude journal. And it comes in five different covers. Some are daisies, sunsets, lighthouses, mountain scenes. And so there's one for everyone who would like it. And I will leave the link below for you to find them on Amazon. Only takes a week or so to get them. And they are available all around the world. So that's really great. So I wanna thank you so much for spending this time with me. And so I'd like to just pray over you right now. Dear Lord, thank you so much for every single person who is hearing my voice right now. And I ask them to be blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ, that they will accept him into their hearts, that he will know them and guide them and love on them and make sure that they know how much he loves them and misses them, misses them. Even if they've not been close to you for years, maybe not ever, now is their time. Father, protect them, cover them with the blood of Jesus. Let no weapon formed against them shall prosper. No matter what words they use to be connected to you, let them know your still small voice. Let them feel you in their heart. Let them know the Holy Spirit. Give them guidance in everything they do so that there is no pain, no anxiety, no depression, no misunderstanding about you because it is so easy, so easy to know you and be comforted by you. Father, I thank you for everything you do for everyone who's listening. And I ask you to bless them abundantly in all ways of their life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And I hope you will say, amen. So God bless you and keep you and guide you through all this dilemma in our world. So much craziness. We don't know when our last day will be. And I would like to think that my audience knows the Lord. So when it is time for their last breath, no matter when that may be, I know I'll meet you up there in the gloriousness of heaven. So you have a wonderful day. And I hope you will listen to this again and again so that you're comforted and you know how to pray and how to speak the words you need to the Lord on your own. You have a wonderful day. I love you and I'll talk to you soon.